truth of the word and reaching the youth. Saving souls of the old, doing God's work with more to do. And he turning up every week and get lit. Get nigga to church on Sunday, you can tune in and get your fix. Turn up, turn up, turn up. It's that we can turn up, turn up, turn up. It's that we can turn up, turn up. Soul food. I'm not talking about Big Mama's cooking. I'm talking about something that's a lot deeper than that. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. And I need you to catch this this morning. Hear me, family, because whatever you feed your soul will show up in your life. We've all heard the old adage that you are what you eat. Well, I need you to understand that just as that is true in the natural, it is also true in the spiritual. And what you consume in this season, hear me family, what it is that you consume in this season is catalytic to the achievement of your destiny. And if you want to change what you're seeing in your life, then you must change what you're feeding your soul. Whenever my wife and I, whenever we go out to dinner, we go out to eat, um, my wife typically doesn't have a problem uh, sending her meal back. <laughs> if it's not what she ordered. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit different than that. I, I just roll with it, whatever it is. If, if I ordered rice, but you bring me potatoes, I, I, don't, I don't send it back. If I ordered green beans and you brought me green peas, I, I just roll with it. Um, but, but my wife sends it back. And, and, and although that's okay in the natural, as I was preparing for this message, the Holy Spirit was letting me know that it's not okay in the spiritual. That when you are served with something that does not line up with God's vision for your life, you must be bold enough and brave enough to send it back. Some of you are consuming some things that you never ordered, that you do not want, nor do you like, but in order to placate certain people, you are letting some things come into your spirit and into your life that is interfering with your soul. And I need somebody to shout, just send it back. Th th there is a relationship that we must have with God. And I need you to understand that, that, that God is not so interested, hear me family, in feeding your stomach, your status, and your ego. He is interested in feeding your soul. And family, I've discovered something that when, when it comes to our relationship with God, we often suffer from what I like to call a spiritual entitlement. Spiritual entitlement. That, that, that is why oftentimes we forget to uh, bless our food before we eat it spiritual entitlement. That, that's why sometimes when we wake up in the morning, we forget to look towards heaven to tell God, thank you for giving me another day. Spiritual entitlement. That, that, that is why Jesus can heal you of leprosy and you keep going to the priest and nobody ever turns around to go back and tell him thank you. Because subconsciously you surmise that he should be satisfied with the two hours that you gave him on Sunday. My, my, my uh, brother Rick, my, my mother was a great cook. She, 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 was a, she was a great cook. People would come by uh, j j just to get some of mama's cooking. And, and I, um, I discovered something when mama passed that mother had a lot of, in, she had a lot of recipes, uh, but she didn't share all of her ingredients. There, there are certain ingredients that mother wouldn't just give to you unless you were close to her. I'm going somewhere. 
there are certain ingredients that she wouldn't share to just everybody. You'd have to seek her and become close to her before she told you her secret ingredient. She didn't tell everybody how she made her chicken and dumplings and sweet potato pie and, 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 and collard greens. She didn't tell everybody what she put in her macaroni and cheese. Come on, just stay with me for a moment. You have to be close to her before she shared those secrets. Have you ever, have you ever tasted something and as you were out eating it, you made this statement, it's missing something. You, you, am I by myself? Have you ever been there where it's, it's good and I can't put my hand on it, but, but it's, it's missing something? Well, if you know that about your food, have you ever said that about your life? I know you're not going to say anything right there on your road because you want everybody on the road to think that you got it all together. But, 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 but have you ever looked back over your life and say, God has been good to me. I got the house that I wanted. I got the relationship that I wanted. I even have the job that I wanted. But I feel like I'm missing something. I, I, I'm not unthankful and I'm not ungrateful. But, 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 but it, it, it feels like there is a void down on the inside of me like I'm missing something. I've come this morning to tell you that God created a void down on the inside of you. That your soul desires something that your flesh cannot give it. I've come this morning to make a final clarion announcement. I'll finish the, the rest next week. I need you to understand that if people can't get over your past, they are not necessary for your future. Get mad if you want to. My name is Luke Stephen Hall and I approve this message. Pastor Luke speaking the truth of the word in which in the saving souls of the old, doing God's work with more to do. Turn it up every weekend, get lifted, making the church on Sunday.